Hello, this is Toph from Trifold Productions with another Blender Quickie for Beginners. And in this Quickie for Beginners, I'm going to show you how I can easily set up a scene of destruction. You know, after like a hurricane or a tornado, things like that, it's the easily how, how you can easily set up a scene in Blender without too much effort being put into it and doing it the easy way. And what we're going to use as a reference or an example is uh, an animation I've been working on for the past like three years called Bridges. And this is a scene that I've been uh, working on. I've completed here. You see the, I think this is called the scaffolding of the building, which is the skeletal system, the, the uh, eye beams. And you saw the debris laying around and the two characters in the middle here. Hopefully this movie will be out, will be out sometime soon because this has been like three years since I've been working on it. So I'm, I'm almost done with it. But we're going to simulate this scene in Blender and I'm going to show you guys how I did it, you know. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Edit in Blender and Preferences because you have to you have to use an, an add-on inside of Blender to get the beams there the beams done and this an add-on that already comes prepackaged with Blender called the uh, Beam Builder. We're going to type in Extra in this search box here, and once this option comes up, you put a check in the box and that activates it. And let's delete this cube in the middle. I'm going to shift A on our keyboard, go to Mesh, I'm going to go all the way down to Extras, and go to Beam Builder, and there's our beam. But we don't want to use this kind of a beam, we want to use an eye beam, not a rectangular beam that looks like a brick. But we're going to go to our uh, pop-up menu down here, and go from Box Profile to Eye Profile, and it's a good, uh, this is what we want, but we want it a little bit longer. So the depth, we're going to turn that to 10. So type uh, left click in there and press 10 on your keyboard and enter. It makes it longer. And once that's done, let me turn on my keyboard shortcut so you can see the keys I'm pressing. Shortcuts. And then we're going to put this in the middle. And that looks good. And now once that's done, and the key thing you have to remember with this is with any add-on or most add-ons in Blender, uh, once you've set it up, if you were to move this, all these options would disappear. So just make sure that you're uh, fine with the options that you've chosen. When it comes to the uh, parameters, make sure you're fine with that, and then you can move it. Because once we move this, that disappears. Okay, but we're fine with what we have here. Is what we want to use, and want to make three separate beams from this. So I'm going to press Shift D on that keyboard, drag this out of the way, Shift D again and drag that out of the way and then with this uh, primary beam let's click left click on that and then we're going to rotate this so that it's standing up just as it was in the footage here so our beams have beams that are going up like this so that's what we want to simulate now so we're going to press R X 90 to make that stand up and then we're going to left click and drag on our keyboard because the uh, this is our ground plane here our ground floor we want our ground to be right here so we want our beam to go up and be level or above the ground, so to speak. So left click and drag on the Z axis and kind of eyeball it till it's kind of sitting on top of that green and red cross line right in the middle. And next thing we want to do is we want to duplicate this, but we want to do it a little bit easier than just pressing Shift D. So the way you can do that is click on the modifier tab, add a modifier, click on array, and we ha have the beams here are two beams. One, there are two things we want to do. We want to make it more than just two beams and want some space in between also. So in order to do that, I uh, had a little bit of stutter there, but in order to do that, let's left click in here and type in 20. And that gives us some space. And to increase the count of the beams, we have to change the parameter here to 5. So let's do that now. Left click in on this arrow and then just uh, to get to 5. And then we have our 5 beams here. I'll click on apply. Then we're going to uh, take this beam. We're going to position it on the top of that beam. You want the ends to meet. So left click and drag on the Z axis. And let's go into our top view by pressing 7. And we're going to drag it on top. Let's scroll up on our mouse and kind of reposition our window here. We can use this to reposition also. Hold down shift on the middle mouse button and do the same thing by to uh, change our uh, viewer viewport window, 
want to make sure this is kind of sitting the edges edges are kind of lined up here okay just eyeball it I'm gonna rotate a little bit so we can see see because this is way above our uh, bottom beam so we're gonna left click and drag on the z-axis and make sure this is touching the top of that just eyeball it and scroll in a little bit if you want to I'm gonna just eyeball this and that looks good now we're going to use the same technique we did before with the ray modifier. I want this to sit on top of these beams here. So we're going to have that selected, this beam selected, and go to add modifier again, go to array, uh, type in 20 here, enter, and increase our count to 5. And then we have those beams there, and they're sitting on top of the initial beams. We're going to click apply to this. And left click on these set of beams. We're going to just shift D this and just move this right across so that they're right underneath uh, the bottom of these beams as they are in our example here of our uh, building here. It has the beams underneath. It's not exactly exactly, but it's similar because I have these beams kind of offset from the uh, the crosses here where these beams cross. But that's that's fine. It's still the same tech, the same uh, concept, the same technique. So we're going to press Shift D on our keyboard and drag these over also and make sure these are sitting underneath. Now the next thing we want to do is have this beam go across here at the top. I'm going to left click on this one. We're going to pull this up. We're going to position this right on top of our other set of beams here. So seven. Let's drag this over. I'm going to rotate this by um, 90 degrees on the x-axis once again R X 90 oh okay this is sometimes this happens sometimes you're not too sure about the direction the beams are supposed to go so let's just kind of guess it let's do R Y 90 that's not it either okay R Z 90 and that's it see there's no there's no shame in, in any of this I mean you're it's sometimes it's just guesswork but as long as you get to the right conclusion, it's it's all good. Let's press one on our keyboard, and apparently this is this too far too far up. So we're going to drag this down also, so that it uh, matches the height, I guess, the top of these beams. So we've got that going on. And now what we want to do, go back to our top view. We want this uh, beam to go across to the end of that. This section of beams here. Same concept, same technique, add modifier, array. And we can see that it's going, it's trying to, to put the uh, the beams, the array of beams on the y-axis and we want to go along the x-axis. So we're going to type in one here, enter, and as you can see it's gone to this part, we want it to go this way. So we're going to type in 0 in the x-axis, 0, enter, and make this negative 1. So it goes in the opposite direction, negative 1, and there we go. We want, once again, 5 beams, so increase the count to 5, and apply this, and then Shift D, left click and drag on the y-axis, so that we're going to drag it over so we have this set. And this is all we, we're wanting to do for this example. And to get more, obviously to get more beams going across the network and so on and so forth, just do the same concept. The array modifier, increase your count, increase your spacing, and then you have that network of beams as we've seen in the footage here. Now the next part you would think, well, we've got the, we've got the uh, beams here for the building. But what about this debris? Now this is going to—you you might be thinking, well, this is going to take a long time to make this, and it's going to be tedious and time-consuming and all that kind of stuff. But actually, it's not. What you can do to get this debris here? Before you do that, let's put a ground plane here. So go back to our scene, Shift A, Mesh Plane. Go on the top view seven, and we're just going to scale this up, S, and just drag your mouse across. We've got our ground there. So now we have a section of a building, the framework of a building, and we want to put our debris on the ground. Uh, like I said before, this is not going to be a, a te tedious process at all. All you have to do is get online, 
and use any web browser you want and just type in 3D 3D debris free that's it and they have free debris on Sketchfab they've got it on uh, CG Trader some of these sites you may have to uh, log in with an email address or create an account but some of them you don't but a lot of the uh, debris that's on the sites are free so that's a good thing and that's going to save us time when it comes to trying to remodel any kind of debris lingering on the ground and I went to CG I think I went to uh, Sketchfab yes and I saw found a lot of free debris a lot of it I mean most of this stuff is free and this is like high quality stuff but you just have to be kind of careful with uh, the mesh count because some of these are like 5k 6k and things like that and even higher and the more verts vertices that you have in the debris obviously it could cause blender to lag and that's what you're trying to avoid but I've downloaded some debris already from these sites that I'm going to use and they're low poly which is fine too and in order to import the debris you go to file and then you go down to import and make sure that when you import it in blender import it in wavefront object uh, format uh, let me navigate to where I've, let me show you where I've saved mine now I've got this here and this is 3d object that, that means it's a OBJ object you don't want 3ds file or C40 because these are different these are different uh, uh, 3D software packages. This is 3ds Max. This is more 4D. We don't want that. That's not what we're using. We're using Blender. So we want Wavefront object uh, files to import into Blender. So I'm going to left click here. I'll right click, copy, go back into Blender, file, import, and we're going to go to Wavefront object. Left click in here, then press Control V to cop to paste that in there, and let's cl left click on that and import. And it's really big, but it's low poly. I'm going to scale this down, S to scale, S again, and there's our debris. And it's right on top of the ground. And to get some kind of variation into this, you can import more debris. Or you can press Shift D on your keyboard to duplicate that, then R, Z, rotate it on the Z axis, and then scale this down just to get some kind of variation on, in it. And that's how you can create a scene pretty easily in Blender, a uh, scene of destruction. And you know, after, like I mentioned before, a hurricane or a um, tornado, you know, things like that. This scene I did because I had a hurricane come through the town and destroy it to have this kind of debris laying around. You can uh, download different kinds of debris. I've downloaded two kinds, this one and this one also, uh, from the free sites where you can download it to get some variation in the sites. And I think I downloaded the third one, which is this. So yeah, that's how you can create a scene of destruction in Blender the easy way. And that's today's Blender Quickie for Beginners. I hope it was helpful to you who have been watching. And uh, really thank you guys who have subscribed to the channel, those of you who have been watching the videos. I hope it's been helping people as much as possible. And uh, thank you guys who are subscribing now and those of you who will subscribe in the future. It's so hard to say subscribe sometimes. But I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.